Hello everyone and welcome to series 5 of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. And yes, the first thing I did in this series was start building up slightly more interesting looking um, spaceships like this one. Uh, so there's been a few changes here from my previous designs. <coughs> the previous designs it sort of tended to look a bit like this. <laughs> it, the new one is, as you can see, much less blocky. It's a much sleeker, more aerodynamic looking shape. So it looks a bit cooler, which is nice. But the most important thing is that I've put these um, shield generators on the front of it. And that means that it can fly a lot faster through space without picking up damage. Because normally when you fly your spaceships around, they use the lasers on the front of them to protect themselves against any uh, any asteroids, any tiny little miniature asteroids they might be flying towards. Let's see if we can find one out in space and um, see, see how it's doing. Like this one here, for example. You see, there's, so there's these, little, there's these little rocks that are drifting towards them through space, and the lasers on the front will pick those off. And in this case, this spaceship is going at about a speed of about 45. So the lasers are capable of dealing with even the slightly bigger rocks, like that one that was uh, just went past there. And so for this this sort of speed, yes, a little a little bunch of lasers at the front of the ship is fine. I mean, I could even stick another one in here just about, but it it just didn't quite fit. It didn't fit in quite as nice. Well, I could. I mean, it would go there and it make a nice triangle. Let's let's put one there for later when it gets back. So that's um, uh, that's 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 great for sort of flying relatively slowly. But if you want to go particularly long distances, especially if you've got especially if you're using using the ship to transport the player around. You want you want to go obviously you want to go a lot faster. So this one is capable of doing about 150, 200 I think because it's got so many more engines on the back of it. So it can travel much much more quickly. So it's much much and so you need a bit more defence on the front. And that means the lasers will still try and shoot down all the rocks they can. But any of those any rocks that get through will hit these shields instead and instead of hitting the hitting the spaceship. And the shields are then self repairing. I think it probably uses a bit more energy to uh, to use the shields rather than just tanking them on the rather than take them out with the lasers otherwise well you might as well just tank them all and just fly straight through everything um, and I think the shields don't repair quite as quickly as the lasers fire on a sort of damage per second rate so the lasers are still very very valuable but the shields provide that extra sort of level of backup the other thing that's really obviously different about this ship as you'll see my traditional spaceship design has always been powered by these solar panels and for flying around in inside the solar system that's absolutely fine even if we go out to the sort of the, the colder areas like out near frost the, a bank of solar panels like this provides enough power to keep the engine running and, and ticking over quite happily but when you've got a lot more engines like this and if you're trying to fly outside the solar system solar panels become essentially useless you're picking up almost no power i think they run at something like one percent of their uh, normal normal power effectiveness so for this ship i fitted it with one of these energy beam receivers and these can be these can be used as enormous thermal batteries so you fire a um, you fire the beam firing beam fiery thing yes that's some good english there uh, one of these things at it for a while until it gets up to about 10,000 degrees c and then you can start and then you can um and then you can use that essentially as i say as a, as a thermal battery and you can gen and you can gradually release that that heat out into one of these heat high temperature heat exchangers, and then into a high temperature turbine generator. And this these between them are capable of producing about a gigawatt, which is far more power than all of this put together will require. So it's a great power supply for the entire ship. Now the the, um, the these turbine generators do do use water and the heat exchangers they do use water. So we've got some tanks of water on the ship as well, and we top that up before we go anywhere. But because it's a condensing turbine, it will also it gives most of that back as water out of the um, out of the side exit here that goes straight back into this tank. And some of it but some of it comes out of steam at 500 degrees C, which we can then put through a normal condenser turbine, get a little bit more power out of it, and then return that water to the um, to the tanks as well. So it does still use a small amount of water, but I think it's less than 1% of the amount that goes in that is 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 lost through the system. So this is quite effective. Now you there's a I was warned by someone on chat that you need to worry a little bit about the balance here. So this this turbine needs to produce um, you, there's there's a, a slight risk of, of ending up with a load of st excess steam in here um, if this turbine isn't running fast enough. Now that hasn't been a problem yet, but I but I suspect it might be possible if you're using maybe the wrong amount of power. It, it could you could end up trying to drag from the in the wrong in the wrong proportions. It hasn't been an issue yet, so I'm not too worried about it. But you never know, and so I'm going to sort of it, it's something to, it's something to be aware of. 
So with this spaceship, I was able to travel all the way outside um, outside my normal normal stomping grounds, and go all the way out to I can't even remember the name of the. Um, it's not that one, not that one. <clears throat> I can't remember the name of the. Um, oh, it's Realm of Shadows. I went all the way out to Realm of Shadows, which is if we look on the star map, it's uh, from Kalidus here where I am. It's to fly all the way out here through deep space to get to this asteroid field over here. Um, so that's <clears throat> quite a long way. And it takes about 15 minutes of real time for my spaceship to get out there. So it's not it's not a journey I want to make regularly. In fact, it, it reminds me a little bit of how um, very early on in the game, when I was just used, just had rockets to get me around before I got spaceships, how forgetting to do something or forgetting to take some resources to another planet when I was building something was a significant problem because it meant I needed to launch another rocket, and rockets were expensive, and it took so it took a while to get everything together in order to do so. But with that spaceship. I flew out here to, to Realm of Shadows, and I was able to build up this, this system out here. So, there were a couple, my original plan was to have it be completely self-sufficient. We'd have a um, a, pa a plant here, uh, sorry, a, a energy beam receiver here that would get that would receive one of the beams from Norvis, and then, as you can see again, we've got another of the heat heat exchangers and turbines, and um, and and a water basically a water system here. And the idea was that this would be, once again, self-contained and we'd, we'd have power out here from that. However, I discovered that it takes a very, very long time to get these things up to a decent temperature. because, Again, because they're so far out, even the energy beams aren't very good at powering these things. So, after I got it up to 800 degrees, um, but on, you need to get it up to 5000 before one of these will work. So I, so, I actually gave up on that and decided it was probably going to be better to do things a bit differently. So, what I've done instead is I built a second spaceship, and this one's similar to the first one. You can see see how it's it's the same sort of basic design and basic idea. However, I've made a few changes. There's fewer engines on the back because this is going to be an automated spaceship, so I'm not going to be in it. So I don't care quite as much about how long it takes to get anywhere, and that means it's a bit thinner. So it only needs the heat, the uh, shields up at the top. Although I have put in a couple of extra lasers down here just in case any of the rocks are coming in at a bit of an angle and somehow manage to get past the shields. Once again, it's using the big thermal battery to store store all the energy it needs to power the um, power the heat exchangers and, and the and the turbine generator. Um, and this, so the bottom part of this ship is is essentially much the same. However, the the other difference is I put in these warehouses in the top part of it because this is a transport ship. And so this one, so this is the idea is this will fill up with nacrotite from the from the mines out here. And so I built up these these mining drill, this little mining in, in, uh, facility here. And the idea is, as as, as you can tell, that the uh, the mines will dig up the nacrotite, put it into the warehouses here, and then once I finished building this, because I sent this back out again after I'd built up the original infrastructure, because I hadn't really done thought about it all the way through. These uh, these will then dump empty into the into these warehouses. However. Nacrotype, much like uranium, requires sulfuric acid in order to produce it, and we don't actually have very much available here, so, we, so, so these mining drills aren't running. So in order to make sulfuric acid, we're bringing sulfur and iron out in this spaceship, which are then going to be unloaded through here, down a belt that's going to come down here, and into the warehouses down here. They can then be unlo unloaded from there and go into this chemical plant that's, that's going to make the sulfuric acid. And that requires water as well, but fortunately, I found a patch of water ice on this um, on this outpost on this on this asteroid. So I've been mining that up and converting it into into water here. So for power, we're powering the entire system, entire outpost up here off the off the thermal battery in this in this spaceship. So when it turns up, it'll link using the um, it's got these. Um, big pylon in here which will link to the to the to the ground station and then start to run and start to provide power for everything here to run so you can see all of this is 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 powered it's just not running because we're out of sulfuric acid so i need to fly out here and, and and finish this off but that that shouldn't be too difficult once that's running the um i've, I've set up a system um using the using the standard system of, of circuits here to, to watch until there's a certain amount of naquium on the ship um i can't remember how much it was this is the wrong one no, wait. That was no. Here we go. Fifteen. Once we've got fifteen thousand nacrotite on there, which basically means these are essentially full, then the spaceship will lift off and fly back. Um, I've also set it to 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 um, to load up only the specific amount of of, um, of these materials that's required. So if we go back here, this is where the spaceship lands at the other end. This is in Norvis orbit. 
And as you can see, we've got a system over here for loading in the sulfur and the iron. So the spaceship will land here, it will put those in here, and, what, and the nacrotite will flow out on this side. And in order to make sure this works properly, you'll notice there's three outputs here, one input there. If we go back to here, you can see that we've got an input here that will take whatever. And then on this side, we've got two separate outputs for the nacrotite and the, the iron and sulfur. So the idea of this is that you will only output the 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 you will only output stuff where it's required. So this one will, will output the iron and sulfur. This these three will output the nacrotite. And these are the only ones that will be linked up at the other end. This is the only one that will be linked up here. Because on on here I've put these these inserters at the top are unfiltered, so they will they will uh, to pass pick up anything. But these ones will only pick up nacrotite. That should keep the whole system with just the sulfur and the iron in the, in the top warehouse and the nacrotite in all three of them. And this is important because that's that's the only place I've got an unloading system for this. But you don't need anything like as much um, iron and sulfur as you do as you do storage space for nacrotite because it stacks to a much higher level. You can get 150 of these, stack of 100, stack of 50, whereas nacrotite only stacks up to 10. And I th think you don't need quite as much. I think I did the maths anyway, and, and this should be the right amount to fill this up. If not, we may need to dispatch the ship manually a few times and, and, and tweak the numbers to, to get a bit more or a bit less coming. And as you'll notice, this warehouse isn't actually full. And the reason that works is because we're also feeding the, um, the signal out through the clamp to these these belts down here. And that's watching to see when the, um, when the iron gets to 1,000 and when the sulfur gets to 1,500. And then it'll cut the belts off there, and, and, it, and it'll stop the uh, stop the flow of the resources into into the spaceships. So that'll um, that'll mean hopefully I'll be transporting exactly the right amount of the ingredients back and forth, just to keep everything in a sort of in an equilibrium and keep everything balanced, and we'll get and, and pass all of that through. So that's bringing the um, that's bringing the Naquitite over to Norvis orbit, and the reason I've done that is because I don't want the um, I don't want this spaceship to have to la ever land on planets, because if you look, I've not, you can see I've not put in any of the um, the landing, uh, what do you call it, the little landing pod things, the um, the rocket tank. What are they? What are they called? These these things, the uh, rocket booster tanks, B um, because they take up a lot of space. It's an extra thing to have to fuel the ship up with, and I think having the extra space taken up by those would make the ship quite a bit slower, just because of the extra weight and size and so on. And it might push me over the, the the actual maximum size of spaceship I'm allowed to have, because I think I've got fairly close. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we've got hull stress. It's it's 90% of the size a spaceship can be, and it's got 86% of the amount of storage a spaceship can have. So this is getting quite close to being as big as a spaceship can be. I think that's why that is in fact why I took some of the extra engines off the back of here, in order to squish it down to to fit into the into the um, amount available. And I think I did, I did a few. Oh yeah, and, and little things like having this wall going across here was because I needed to push the um, push the amount of the hull stress down a little bit. In fact, I think I built this when the when the maximums for both of these were 900. So you can see just how close I was butting up to with the um, with the size of this ship. So the Nacrotite lands here. Nacrotite ship lands here, unloads into these warehouses, reloads from restocks from here, and then we'll fly back off again. The Nacrotite is then passed over into this little ship here one of my old style ones and that will take a warehouse full of nacrotite and it will fly it down onto um oh which planet was it i think it was tulip let's have a look tulip is a moon i think yes tulip so that will then come in and land i don't think i've actually specified exactly where yet but it'll come in and land around here somewhere and the idea is that it will then unload all of the nacrotite out onto a belt, which will go into the, um, which will be loaded into here, uh, and then it can be passed through with a processing system. Then, when we get out the nacrium ingots here, those can then be loaded onto the spaceship, and it'll fly off again with those. And I think I need to dis uh, tweak the design of the spaceship a little bit so that, that will actually work. But the theory, the theory is quite is is good for this part. So, as you can tell, this is an extra um, facility I've built up, and the idea of this one is that it will it will t bring in the uh, it will take in the nacrotite ore and it will turn it into nacrium ingots. And the reason I've done it here on Tulip, well, there's a f there's a few reasons. The reasons the reason I've done it on a on a on a land on a planet slash moon at all is because I want to use as many of these um, productivity modules as as I as, as absolutely as I can because nacrotite is 
it's expensive in inverted commas because I have to bring it all the way from way outside the solar system. So it needs to be transported all the way here and then and then before it's processed. And it's really, really um, what's the opposite of dense? It's really, really undense. So it comes it only stacks up to ten, which means you're having to transport enormous numbers of stacks of it around in order to get even relatively small numbers of of the actual ingots. So in order to get as much out of this as I can, I want to I want to load this up to the point where I can um, I want I want to I want to productivity it up as much as I possibly can. And so if we look at these, we can see I've got a um, a plus thirty two percent here. I've got a plus twenty four percent here. Plus twenty four percent here is on this step as well. And then finally a plus forty percent on this step. Um, I'm going to do the maths and then flash the number up on screen here to show you exactly what that means. But it means I'm going to get significantly more um, Naquium ingots out the other side than I am Naquium Naquitite ore being put in at the beginning. Um, now I don't know how, quite how much that's going to help because the ingots are only 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 10 so I might need to end up doing multiple flights to that spaceship in order to get all the stuff transported. We shall have to see how that goes. I am um, maybe I should make the spaceship a bit bigger, but we'll we'll see. It's a, the, the whole the basics the basic idea should should work though, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll 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 just keep an eye on it. Um, I need, need a bit of thought is required there. This this process isn't quite finished yet. So yes, Naquium. And the reason I've been doing all this stuff with Naquium is because you need it for all of the all of the um, the the later all of the deep space sciences. So if we look at if we look at um, uh, catalogs, deep space, deep space one. You need nano engineering data, which need. Oh, this one doesn't need naquium. Okay, um, but some of them do. Naquium energy data. Here we go. So we need four naquium ingots to make one energy data card. So that's going to be quite expensive in naquium to make that. This one needs one to one, so that's not quite so bad. And oh, this one, I'm going to need to launch probes from that. Um, from from my probably from my asteroid fields as well. So that's going to be another another thing to think about out there and that's going to make this even more um even more complicated but i'm sure but it's 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 sort of a solved problem the um the only question is whether i decide i want to have um separate uh, separate ships flying back and forth to do the void probe data and the bringing the naquium or whether i reckon i can just lump all of that into one ship and i reckon i can probably do it in a single ship that's probably going to work reasonably well um and is that it? Yes, that's it for that one. And then we'll get on to level tier two, and that's probably um, probably going to require more naquium in here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Look, that's a lot of naquium plate in there. Um, and you only get four of those out of an ingot. So the twenty, the twenty-four that were required for whatever it was I was just looking at, that's going to need mean another six ingots. You can see you can see how all this is adding up very quickly, and how I'm going to get through massive, massive quantities of this stuff. So anything I can do to improve the speed I'm transporting this stuff around at. I'll, 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 I'll grab, I'll definitely want to grab it. Okay, so that's been, that has been the main push since the, uh, since the, of this, of this new series so far. There's a whole new metal to be, to be found, used, and, and, and just dealt, dealt with in general. So I've been, I've been working quite hard on, on trying to sort that out. I have also had a bit of a problem, um, over with the biologicals. Let's see if that solved itself yet. Yeah, that's not biological. This is biological. In that I ran out of the orange goo. This stuff. Um, and I traced this back. And, and this, 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 this becomes a problem because the orange goo is required to make the pink goo, and the pink goo is required to make the um, pink goo pot. No, there's something else. Pink goo is required to make the oh yes the the, uh, the biological samples, and then required to make the later biological samples as well. And that has meant. That science has, uh, yes, yeah, so you run out of the blue things down here, um, and that has meant that the tier four science has completely stopped, and we've now don't don't have any of that being pumped through. So, a biological science is going to ground to a bit of a halt here, um, and that has happened because over here, where is it? Yes, we uh, we got to the point where we'd run out of the heavy. So yeah, let's take a step back. <laughs> the orange goo is made here, and that's made out of petroleum gas and um, and cosmic water. Now, the petroleum gas wasn't a problem. I did have a decent amount of that at the time. Um, the co but the cosmic water was having problems because there was no lube, and that was having problems because there was no heavy oil to make into the lube. So, what I've, in order to fix that, I've tweaked the recipes over here. So, that instead of making, instead of doing the light oil heavy oil processing, I'm doing the heavy oil heavy oil processing. 
and that allows me to make more heavy oil and a little bit of light oil and a little bit of petroleum gas and we can then use these crackers down here to turn that into to turn any excess heavy oil into light oil and petroleum gas now it is still struggling it's worth noting here so we're, the, the system isn't quite good enough but it is running a bit and so these tanks up here are gradually filling up and and these are have less in them than last time I looked so a train must have been and, and, and collected some so it is basically working However, the, the problem actually seems to be the rate that we can unload this methane ice from here and bring it over here to be melted and turned into oil. So doing this from methane gas is, I think is a good idea, um, but we're getting through a lot of this methane ice. Um, I, <laughs> it, it's being brought over almost constantly um, and there's only about 2,000 left in the, in, in the system here. Let's see, does that mean there's another train over here picking more up? No, not quite yet. But sooner or later, we'll have to bring it, bring some more over. And so, yeah, as I say, we're churning through that at quite a rate. And, and I'm, But I'm hoping the, the problem arose sort of over quite a lot of time, quite a long time period. So I think hopefully this is going to be sufficient once we've got all the buffers filled back up again. But the problem is there are quite a few different areas that require the orange, the chemical gel. And so they've all been filling back up again. Um, and that's putting a huge load on the system and is why it's taking so long to get this up and running again so yeah that's I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that that's going to going to sort itself out in time but at the moment it's still a bit still a little bit of a problem another slight concern is how long this patch is going to last for we've got still got um, 133 for 550,000 here so I think we're going to be okay for a while but it is being pulled out pulled out fairly quickly. Only they see that's gone yellow again because we, we need the trains coming over to get some, get another load of it. So yeah, it's um it's a thing. We're getting through quite a lot of that in order to keep the science running up here. But on the flip side, I'm not doing a great deal of research at the moment because I'm sort of trying to get on to doing the next tier, and that's do and that's taking quite a lot of my concentration to build things up, rather than just sitting here running the uh, running the systems as fast as I can in order to get more. Uh, more research available. Okay, that's basically all I have for you today. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I think things are going pretty well. It's a, it's a whole new series and therefore a whole new set of challenges. Um, the t top of the list being the um, being the Naquium uh, processing, uh, mining and processing, dealing logistics, just just everything around that, because there's so much of it to so much of it to deal with. But I think it's um, it, I think it's a challenge I'm I'm going to be able to step up to without too much difficulty. My biggest concern, having just been talking about it and rubber duck debugging a little bit at the moment, is that this ship here is going to have too much naquium um, ore and not in, and not be able to fill up with enough ing ingots to bring it back. Oh, I have yes, I have been smart here. Look, we've got the two two separate exits here. One for the uh, naquitite ore and one for the ingots, so we can feed them out in different places when it gets there. But I think I might need to have another. I might need to extend the ship and put another warehouse in there for more, uh, for more naquium ingots because I think I'm going to be bringing back quite a lot more than I'm taking ore out there, and I don't want it to build up too much at the other end because if you get if you get to that stage where it all builds up and jams up, then the ship will stop flying, and everything will stop and it'll break and I'll be sad. And it's it's difficult because I haven't managed to find a good way of putting time limits on ships. So I could say fly out and if a certain amount of time passes and you're still not full take or you then take off yeah but then it wouldn't be un completely unloaded so yeah it, it it's tricky but um i'll say i'll keep fiddling with things and i'm sure we'll get it to the point where it's uh, where it's working satisfactorily sooner or later so right thank as i say thank you for watching don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the other exciting content i put out so, so this this is the uh, as, as you're probably aware these these factorio space exploration videos come out every friday every friday at, um, at about five o'clock uk time um this gives you a sort of a summary of what i was doing in the previous streams so those streams are every tuesday evening at 7 30 um and where i'll play for sort of three four hours um until i get tired but or until i get frust too frustrated to carry on and then i'll go and then, and then i'll clear off to bed we also have um, um, we have an in, we do have an industrial revolution stream running on Thursday evenings. However, we're practically finished with that one now. So the one that went out last night, uh, by the time you're watching this, might well have been the last one. And we're sort of debating on what to do next. So come along on a Thursday evening, find out what we're up to because um, it may have changed. 
And also, the week uh, come along on Thursday, uh, no, not Thursday, s Sunday evenings, uh, when there'll be a, a GTA video coming out of us playing Manhunt around uh, around Los Santos and everyone chasing me down in no doubt brightly coloured cars and make, making things garish and bright and obvious. <laughs> I'm also trying to release some um, more real-worldy videos of sort of actual real-world projects, whether it's um, talking about a new car or uh, or building something or car mods or some what, whatever it is. I, I, I like to keep sort of a bit of variety going on there. It's sort of a bit of it shows, it shows a bit of what I've been getting up to recently, and hopefully those are going to be um, interesting as well. Right, so I think that's everything I want to talk about today. As always, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.